Okay, so you hit a tiger with a flaming torch. I think the other thing this sequence really needed was a leopard throw. Do you agree with that, Hugo? Yes. I think that's what this sequence needed. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. That's the well, next step, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the VFX Notes podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Action VFX and F-Track. Action VFX has the best library of VFX stock footage, with over 5,500 high-quality elements. They are the best stock footage I ever come across, and I highly recommend them. And the new free for subscribers features allows you to instantly unlock over 1,000 free bonus assets for only $29 a month. Sign up at actionvfx.com today and start downloading. F-Track is an Academy Award-winning company specialized in project management, production tracking, and the creation of media review platforms for the creative industry. F-Track has recently released two new versions of its media review software. Check out F-Track Review for the new interface and even more accessible reviews. You can also try CineSync 5, the brand new version of CineSync, built from the ground up for the most secure, high-quality review sessions out there. You can try both products for free via the link on the description below. And now on to the show. Hi everyone, welcome to VFX Notes. I'm Ian Fales from Befores and Afters, and as always, I'm joined by Hugo Guerra from Hugo's Desk. Hi Hugo. Hi Ian, how are you doing? I'm really good, thanks. I'm so excited for this episode. It's part two of our RRR coverage. Uh, if you watched part one, we really hope you did. You'll see that we're pretty excited about this movie. If you haven't watched it, you really should go and check that out because it's actually not just about the visual effects, Hugo. It's kind of like a mini review, a look at the production, cinematography, lots of things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Go and watch part one. Like this is this movie, like we it's dear to our heart. Like we really like this movie and we talk a lot about it. The film is so good. Yeah. We yeah. we just can't say enough about it. Before we jump into this second part, we always want to give a shout out to our supporters. That's our sponsors, who you would have seen at the front of the video, but also our Patreon supporters. And if you're a Patreon supporter, you actually get early access to this podcast, which is really cool. What we also like, Hugo, is people who like and subscribe us on YouTube and on podcast networks, don't we? Yes, we do. We do. We're trying very hard to, to try to reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and get certified on YouTube. So if you have not subscribed to Hugo's Desk yet, please, you know, uh, consider subscribing. It's completely free and, and you get to get a notification for all the episodes we, we drop. And of course, um, it will really help us if you could also rate us on, if you, if you, if you don't watch it on YouTube with the behind the scenes, if you just listen to it on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or Google, don't forget to leave a rating because it will really help us to grow the channel and to grow the podcast as well. Yeah. And thanks everyone for watching and also all your comments that you leave, which I always say Hugo does a much better job at answering than I do, but I've been <laughs> jumping on there much more recently. I uh, really appreciate people chiming in. And can I just say also when you tell us that we've got something wrong, please yep. do it. And we're yep. the first people to realize that, you know, this sort of stuff is complicated by the processes used but also who did it not all that information is always available sometimes we're making mini guesses we try not to do that yeah but we love a bit of feedback so please keep those comments coming in yes absolutely. you go i don't know how you answer them all you're amazing <laughs> i try my best try my best but sometimes they some sometimes the, some of them they get slip through the net <laughs> but i try <laughs> <laughs> right well part two one of the big sequences we didn't talk about, which actually happens early in the film, which I feel like, um, you know, gets a lot of attention, is a sequence in the jungle, Hugo, <laughs> where Beam, I mean, what do we say here? He effect effectively captures a tiger, right? Is that, <laughs> is that what, or, yeah, catches a tiger. I wouldn't say, not captures, catches a tiger. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This scene is is well. It it wasn't supposed to be a tiger. He was. I think he got much more than he bargained for. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's the thing. Uh, no, yeah. no. This this shot is well. This is the introduction. The first time we ever see uh, his character Beam uh, showing up. 
um, you know, like big shout out. We did that last time on the for episode one, but big shout out on that first reveal shot, the re- the rotation shot with the with the lake in the forest. That's a beautiful mm. shot. And then from there, it just goes full on, doesn't it? Like he's being chased by some kind of of wolf, I guess. It, it looks like I think he, it's a wolf. I think it's a wolf. And then yeah. it kind of like ups the ante when you see some tracks of tigers on the floor and then a tiger shows up and then hits the wolf and then they both start fighting and he's just looking at this it, it's insane that sequence isn't it <laughs> it's a classic example of where this film goes with scenes it's it's beautiful in one hand on one hand and then it just keeps adding layers and layers and layers the filmmakers know what they're doing the audience members sitting there stunned And because, you know, there can be slow motion here, there can be some dramatic camera moves um, and some pretty amazing stunts, the shots are very frenetic and dramatic. And that's not even to talk about the CG creatures here. You know, I'm just talking about the shot design is full on. It's funny that you mentioned that. In terms of shot design, there are like a couple of things that I wanted to point out. Like one of them, of course, the slow motion you just mentioned. Because slow motion is something we, you know, we don't tend to see these animals in slow motion. I do mm. think that's a really great choice for you to not have that problem of suspense and disbelief that you usually have when you look at these kind of creatures, because you don't really know how a tiger hits a, 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 you know, we don't really know how they behave in slow motion, and so there's a lot of leverage and leeway there, and also there's a lot of clever use of bushes and trees and trunks that sometimes are strategically pushed in front of things a big example of that is when he holds the tiger head at the end of the sequence like there's a bunch of bushes and leaves in the front that are kind of hiding a bit the connection and the the integration of his hands lifting the the head there's a lot of really smart smart uses of framing to help the cg and to to help sell, sell the shot as well which i really right. found it fascinating when i was looking at it uh but yeah, yeah. that uh, but yeah, but this this there's not a lot of behind the scenes on this, but Ian, the behind the scenes that is out there is exactly up your alley, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was so glad when the um, production visual effects supervisor, that's uh, Srinivas Mohan, and we mentioned him on the last podcast, and as I say, Hugo and I have been chatting to him on Twitter, which is really cool. <laughs> he um, released a breakdown which basically shows the live action plates of the stand-in tiger, <laughs> a blue screen stunty um, with padding, um, and then along with the final shots. So what you're getting here is in the plate interaction, yeah. proper lighting. I mean, it doesn't make the final work easy to replace <laughs> that stunty with a CG tiger, but there's something practical tactile about that hugo right it, it it feels like the actor's actually grappling with the tiger it does yeah well besides the fact that it makes for a hell of a behind the scenes the <laughs> <laughs> i love it <laughs> but he, and, it, and the guy is really going for it isn't he? he's like scratching his back mm. and like moving and he's doing a really good job <laughs> even when he plays dead he's like well like <laughs> dying and everything he's actually yeah. a pretty good uh, pretty good stunt there but um, I wish I knew his name. I don't know. I couldn't find his name. But but uh, congratulations to him and to his amazing work. No, it, it really, I think it helps a lot. We've talked about this so many times on the show. Having something there always helps, even if it's something that you're going to completely replace. And in a way, this, I feel like this film, by, the more I look at the breakdowns, the more I see this happening on all the shots, really, where they always have something there, even on yeah. the most, the most, the shots where they replace everything like almost like even when they explode the house at the end there's like blue walls with tracking markers you know so that the actors know where things are it helps the performance it helps the actor and and then also it's an excellent reference for animation and also an an excellent reference for weight because some of the biggest problems with these things are weight and as you notice like he's trying to hold the tiger obviously normal man wouldn't be able to hold the tiger anyway but he's not a normal man he's a superhero but he's like holding the whole weight of the stunt uh, double and he's the stunt double is really going down on him and making his body flex and his muscles flex and you can't do that in cg and unless you would have done a completely digital version of of the actor which sometimes Mm. we see on other films 
but I think the fact that it's him, and when you look at the before and afters, you see that they've left most of him uh, intact. He's not not really not really touched up. It it really really works. I, I think it really works. It's a it's a stunning shot, and also it's like really powerful for the storytelling, of course, because then later on we know why he's grabbing this tiger. Why does he need to grab these animals to do his, to basically to do this his attack to the house later on? It's it's really fascinating. Yeah, you're right, Hugo. That's a great setup, and um, it's it's kind of cool that there's lots of different animal shots later in the film. This sequence in particular was um, the visual effects for it were handled by MPC. Now we know that worldwide MPC is you know one of the go-to places for creature work. Um, Lion King, and the, you know they they actually did do a bunch of creature work on Life of Pi as well. Um, amongst many other films very recently, Jungle Book. So they know how to do lions. The only thing I was going to say, as I kind of said for the um, part one, there's a stylized nature to this sequence. It It's a realistic looking tiger, but everything is a bit heightened. The colors even are quite blown out, aren't they, Hugo? And, you know, I think in a way they kind of get away with something that's just a bit more heightened than something absolutely, totally Jungle Book, Lion King, photoreal. Yeah, uh, and I, I think I think it's definitely a great choice. And I, I feel like it's, mm. it's a really good choice because it helps to sell this idea of these heroes from the past, of the Indian culture, and these heroes that are superhuman strength. The whole thing is also very sharp. You know, if you notice really, like, in a lot of shots, there's not a lot of defocus going on. The depth of field is very wide, very big, yes. and everything is is always very sharp. Even on big fight sequences at the end of the film, even on even on the police station that we talked last time on the last episode, everything is very sharp. Uh, it's not the usual type of, you know, let's lower the f-stop to try to have a lot of bouquet and a lot of defocusing. Everything is on here. Everything is sharp. Um, and I think... It helps to, to deliver like some kind of stylized, I'm not compare. it's a wrong compa comparison, but when I look back at 300, that was the style that it had. It was highly stylized. Obviously, 300 was even more stylized, but mm. it, 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 it gave you a feeling on the shot. It's the same thing here, I think. Although, to be fair, on some shots, it does look, a photo reel and others oh. not but i think that's the idea yeah. i think that's the whole idea it's also full daylight i mean it's oh, dappled yeah. <laughs> under the jungle yeah. i mean come on yeah. make it hard it, it's insane and let's we haven't even you know maybe the final thing to talk about actually for the sequence is the net yeah. so not only is there this yeah. tiger <laughs> there's a net around it yeah. you know or yeah. a, it's a full you know, cg net try yeah. and trap it you have mm. also like not only the full cg net but also you have like all the like which is a really complicated asset that is wrapping around the tiger and the, the the fur and also wrapping on the floor as well and then you have the cg leaves interactions also yeah. the trail of kind of destruction on the floor that they leave behind there's also cg trees on the side on the back as well <laughs> funnily enough there's like a a tree with like a little piece of a green screen just attached to it on the back <laughs> my yeah, ma mainly to try to catch his head, uh, so that you would have a better keying for this for his hair. But it, mm. I think they've changed the framing during the footing, and and you can kind of see that they kind of like don't really match uh, that place. So th this happens a lot on set where you're trying to kind of guess where where the f the framing will be. So you put up green screens, and then sometimes the framing changes, and then it's too late to change it. Kind of looks like that here. No, but the the net thing is really impressive. And I mean, one last thing I must say: this shot is an incredible muscle muscle porn, isn't it? Like he's like <laughs> putting his muscles there and putting the yeah. wire and the cable, and he's screaming at the tiger. Like he's this is like Arnold Schwarzenegger muscle extravaganza <laughs> nostalgia almost. <laughs> one of a few in the film, let us say that. And and cool superhero moments. I I seriously love this. I love it. I like really it's love it's this. All, I, I there's nothing out there about this, but it, it looks to me like he has different levels of muscles during the film. 
<laughs> He's sometimes uh. more strong, strong than others. But no, but it's an amazing shot. It's, it really sets up the mood for this character. Uh, after seeing how Ram was introduced, now we introduced Behem and and it's yeah. what a what an introduction, isn't it? The king of the jungle almost. <laughs> and Hugo, another thing to mention about that great tiger catch, tiger chase sequence is the previs for it. Previs done by Concept. That's a studio owned by John Griffin. I who I've talked to many times, um, and he's such a nice guy. Also quite um uh far ahead of the pack early on with using <laughs> um Unreal Engine. But this uh, reel that John's released from Concept is really cool, isn't it? The previous one. It is. It is awesome. I, I can't believe you just did a pun there, like ahead of a pack <laughs> with them chasing him on the forest. Thank that's you. good. That's good. Oh my god. Thank you. No, no. That's it. Is not only it's remarkable. You you've been watching the the footage right now while while you're watching this YouTube video. But not only the it's awesome that they did a really really extensive previous, but it's amazing how close it is to the final thing. It is yeah. really impressive. It's really impressive. Yeah. This is a very well developed uh, uh, animatic. It's really, really complex and really well made. And I'm, I'm assuming, you know, I haven't talked to them, of course, but I'm assuming it was such a crucial moment to have it on set when you were filming this because it must have helped so much with the planning of the shooting and the planning of where the camera would go, where the bike with the camera would would go through, where the wires would be. Like it, it is such a part. And I know we always talk about this. Every film now has previs. But I agree with you. This is previs on another level, isn't it? <laughs> it's really advanced. Yeah, it's something very polished about it. But I think that's also about concept taking advantage of what most previs is doing these days, which is using real-time yep. game engines. The benefit of that is it has great renders, but the other benefit is changing things, yep. iterations, yep. right? I suppose previous studios had got fantastic at doing iterations with Maya Playbast renders, right? But there's something next level about being able to change camera angles, yeah. layout, lighting design um, in basically in Unreal Engine or other pre yeah. uh, other game engines. And if you think about it, like not again, assuming I'm not saying that that's happened, but you could even have on set a really beefy laptop and do it right there uh, on set. If you have yeah. a beefy laptop with a good quadro card, you can probably do and changes on the fly, which is not a, that easy with the older pipelines. I guess this has some benefits, but also has not a downside, but it, it is making everything else look worse you know <laughs> it's almost like now <laughs> directors and also production companies are going to start to expect this kind of polish when they look at this is already happening we already see this even on on productions from ilm where they have really some extensive um extensive previous as well but previous has now become almost like a pre-production level a render thing uh, some previses are really really impressive and i guess this is just how the industry is changing you know we used to be we used to do a storyboard storyboard is not going to cut it anymore you know like it's now mm. it's going to have to be a full-blown movie that you're going to edit we now have it's so fascinating we now have editors doing that edit first before it goes into the shoot and then they shoot it and then it becomes a film it's it's impressive i i what, yeah. what time to be alive. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, and driving that is also the virtual production side of it, which yeah. is that it's not even previews anymore. It's the actual template for what you might shoot on an LED stage or yeah. with some sort of virtual camera set up, um, simulcam. So, yeah. But anyway, you, as you've been watching the reel, I think it's really great work from Concept. We, we definitely wanted to mention it. it. It's actually a good sequence to lead into what seems to be called the intermission sequence. Yeah or the major raid that happens on um, the housing complex, partly because that also involves CG creatures. Yeah. But it is another example of the elaborate shot design, fight sequences and choreography that goes on. In this sequence, there's a whole lot of visual effects studios involved. Apologies straight away if we sort of miss a shop that contributed to this sequence, but... In some ways, Hugo, we're going off the breakdowns that have been released, which are actually super cool. Yeah. Um, and one of the first breakdowns that I saw for the film was from Digital Domain, yeah. which showcases the, the 
the moment the truck rams the front doors. I thought that was a very fun part of the sequence. It was, and what a shot. The music, the tempo, the framing, that's a hell of a shot. And that, 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 uh, that um, breakdown is really cool because you get to see the elaborate sets that they've actually built. Like they've built- Yeah, and the rigs. Yeah, mm. they've built huge fronts of the buildings, which then of course they've added. You also see on the breakdown the amount of, uh, of uh, scanning and lighter scanning that they actually did on during the set because you, you see a lot of the placeholder geometry of the lighter set in the breakdown as well. But yeah, the, I, I think the coolest part is the truck rig itself, isn't it? It's on tracks and it's like, it's so cool because they've built the whole truck, which they use most of it. But then, of course, they had to build an entire CG bottom mm. of it and, and top of it as well. But it, this is this is a cool it's a cool cool part the track and the rig isn't it? I really love it. It's it's like it's like if you were in love with the movies and you got to watch the making of this. I mean, if you were there, but also just with these behind the scenes videos, it's like every little single trick in the book, <laughs> right? Yeah. Real practical stuff, uh, like literally a track. You know, that um, you think like, wow, they're going to have to paint all that out later. Yes, they do. <laughs> um, you know, effects sims, um, great animation here. I, I wondered um, how they were going to do this when I noticed that a bunch of different visual effects studios contributed to the same sequence. Yeah. But actually, if you watch the sequence, you don't get that feeling that it's a, no. you know, whole different studios doing it. And I wonder whether that was just, there was so much work. Maybe there's a few pickups, you know, because as we said in part one, it was a long shoot. Um, but yeah, DD's work here is, is, is really cool, especially, especially the integration of real and CG. Yeah. yeah. Um, if I hadn't seen that breakdown, I wouldn't have known what was what actually. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, you're right. The integration, but this is throughout the whole film. They're like, to my count, there's 12 vendors involved and, and on, on, that we know of on this shot, there's at least two, at least Digital Domain and Makuta. And, and it's, in, in, it's really impressive how the entire film is actually pretty matched and there's never really any dip or drop. Everything looks very consistent. Like, shout out to the VFX supervisor and his team because everything is incredibly consistent. Everything has mm -hmm. kind of the same look including you have several vendors doing the same assets in the same front of houses and the same things, and they all look the same. Because earlier in the film, you see the palace being done by DD, and then later on, you see the palace again being done by Makuta, and looks the same. It's, it's very yep. impressive. And yep. one little thing I wanted to talk about, the truck thing, like it's so funny to see this kind of wireframe little car that they have on the set when the, the truck comes in oh, yeah. and then there's like this stand-in wireframe car that they i'm guessing wanted to track to put the cg car i'm assuming this was an idea on set because later on when you look at the breakdown they don't even use they, they put the car slightly in a different place and the car rotates in a completely different way so so the rig was just like i guess a reference of some kind but it's so funny to see a wireframe. We see a few wireframe rigs on the film. Uh, yeah, later with on a great we'll talk big about big tracking, <laughs> tracking marker on the front, right? I mean, well, fair enough. What a great idea. <laughs> it is That's, pretty cool. Again, it, yeah. it just makes the whole set come to life as well because there's a lot of a lot of people there. There's a lot of stunts and there's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, extras on the film, and the more chaotic and the more stuff you make it happen on the set the more their action are going to be more believable they're going to be more scared they're going to be acting better like the whole thing just comes to life i think by having those mm. things there and it it does like there's a lot of things happening from smoke machines to particles flying around everywhere to explosions little little dips of explosions wire removals everywhere it is it is an insane shot <laughs> so that that's the truck part that DD handled, who, and they also did other things, and we'll, we'll come to that as well. Um, part of this intermission raid is this crazy part of that sequence, Hugo, which involves, I'm only going to say it like this, but I don't mean that it should be called this, <laughs> fighting with hoses. <laughs> I mean, can that be in every movie I watch now, please? 
It's so clever. It's so clever mm -hmm. because, you know, we've been introduced to them, fire and water, and then suddenly, like, it is yeah. so funny how you see, like, of course, Ram, Ram literally rams in with, like, a fire truck. He's in, on fire. He's bringing fire with him. And then Beham, it, whenever you see him reacting to this big truck coming in with fire, like you look at all the water behind him, every framing of this film has fire behind Ram and then water behind Beham. And this entire thing with the hoses and the water versus fire, it's just so cool. The whole theme, the thematic thing, really driving the VFX here, it's just awesome. And, do and you, you but know. Do you, but as a VFX soup yourself, when you were shown, if you were shown storyboards for this or previous, um, like, and you you thought, okay, fire and water. Actually, we're pretty good at simming those. We're yeah. pretty good at simming those these days. So we probably don't need too much of it on set, even though we like the interaction that real fire and water bring. I have to say, in the breakdowns that Makuta have published um, for this part of the sequence. There's a lot of real water oh, yeah. and a lot of real fire. <laughs> and yes, there are blue screens, but oh my God, Hugo, tell me about the kinds of challenges that exist for oh my God. retaining those atmospheric elements in the scene, but also replacing them perhaps where you have to replace them. I know, it's insane. Especially there's this shot where VM in slow motion grabs the hose, you know, when he's like grabbing the yeah. hose to start the fight. And in behind him, there's a bunch of practical hoses going off like crazy, like yeah. just like splitting around. Behind the entire water spray everywhere, you have a blue screen, which you can hardly see. It's like the, the, the blue screen is like just a faint thing on the back. And so it's like, and when you look at the breakdowns, it's so challenging because they have to retain some of the water and then they had to put some more CG hoses and then they had to put... I'm guessing CG water on top, not that we see it on the breakdown, but they had to replace some parts of the water, probably patching with other parts of water. Mm. It's But with with this entire thing, the hose that he holds on the front is a real hose as well. That's even yeah, more complicated. That's what I mean. He's holding wow. that one for real, and yeah. which is also a great piece of framing and acting because he hits the mark and he holds it. And I'm assuming there's wires to help him out with that, but, but we, don't, we don't actually see the wires. So I'm not... Not entirely. I've noticed on some of these breakdowns that um, certain wires are kind of half only visible. So I, I don't know if the breakdown is complete from that sense, but maybe there are wires helping that hose. But he does hold it. Now, this is an incredibly complex shot in sequence. And I, I, my, my jaw went to the floor when I saw this part because this <laughs> is so complicated. And again, a, a Shout out to the stunt team as well. That this is so good, and the set design yeah. as well. They had an entire. They actually have um, a fountain there, a real fountain, which is behind him. Uh, you know, even little details like when he when he goes into the fountain and holds the hose. There's even like little splashes of CG water just on the interaction with his feet. So there's a lot of little yeah. details which are beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I I just loved it and. I mean, we've got water, we've got fire in terms of things blowing up and a uh, torch being held. But I'm just going to add one more complex thing to the sequence, Hugo. Fireworks. <laughs> yeah, why not? And not just fireworks <laughs> going through frame. Fireworks doing highly choreographed <laughs> swirls and, you know, symmetrical rings and all this sort of stuff that clearly is in time with the music, the action, yeah. whatever else. So... Again, congrats shot. to, you know, the planning for this sequence, but also VFX from Makuta for pulling that sort of thing off because, you know, you've got to have the timing perfect for this sort of stuff. Yeah. And they really, they really nailed it. They Seriously did. They it. did. That, that, that shot, talking of how cool the shot with the hose is when he hold, hits the hose, but then the shot with Ram picks up the fire torch and then he's like, that big hero wide shot with all the fireworks going in the back, like you said, that's an amazing shot, which is so funny to look at the behind the scenes, which I'm again posting while we're talking here. Mm. He's, ho he's holding a lamp on his hand. Yeah. He has like a little lamp for the light interaction. And then of course the fireworks are all CG, of course, but there's of course light interaction from them. Incredibly like 
you know, not very usual, but the fireworks were actually handled in Studio Studio Max, which is not very common to see fireworks or this kind. Of, this is the kind of thing that we always think it's Houdini, but no, this time it was 3D Studio Max, which I found found it uh, was fascinating. No, but yeah. I, I love that shot. That shot could be my wallpaper. That is a hell of a shot with all the fireworks yeah. behind him, and you know, and I, I must say, I, I don't want to have any hate from this. We all have our favorites. I do love Ram on this film, and I, I think I, I have my favorite. My favorite is the fire. <laughs> so I, I love oh. that shot. That's my wallpaper no, no, right no. there. I'm team water. I'm <laughs> team, team water, water everybody. Okay. Just so <laughs> no, it's, it's, a, it's a conflicted <laughs> thing to me because I'm such an animal lover. But I, I just love the style of that shot and the style of all the shots with Ram, the music beats when he's walking in slow motion. There's so much walking on this film in slow motion. I find it <laughs> fascinating whenever he, and of course that big mustache. That's like my, I don't have a mustache like that, but my father had a mustache just like that, like a big, big one all the way to here. Mm. <laughs> like typical Portuguese <laughs> mustache, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> Hugo, something that Makuta's um, breakdown also reveals is some pretty neat, environment work yeah um now we've talked about their work on the t-junction and police um attack sequence uh, police station attack sequence and i think we mentioned that you know they're sort of strong advocates for blender yeah and have really adopted that um heavily on this film now here's the thing blender is not widely used in you know hollywood feature films um so many people get their hands on it, of course, when because it's free and you get to learn Blender and I think it really helps a lot of VFX artists advance their careers. But so far, Blender isn't necessarily hugely adopted in a studio pipeline. Here, I think Makuta is showing the power of Blender, right? Especially in some of those environment shots. Absolutely. They, they actually, researching a bit more into this, there's also a lovely article on the Blender Foundation website Mm. Uh, they've actually implemented a Blender in 2019. It's like a long time ago already. And yes, you're right. I, I, I don't think it's, I don't know if it's true, but I, I can assume it's true that this is the largest film ever made with Blender. I can only guess that because it's 700 shots in total that they've used Blender right. with. Yeah. I Th mean, there are some massive. fully animated features and, and yeah, shows yeah, yeah. that totally use blender of course yeah i'm but, talking yeah. about like visual effects films with footage mm. and I'm, I'm not i know i know in animation of course there are films that probably have thousands of shots with blender but i'm talking mm. about like with live action like this i think this must be the biggest live action blender based pipeline film um yeah no it's very impressive 700 shots and they apparently uh, used the combination of Blender 2.8 and 2.9. And the cool thing about this is that they also use 3D Studio Max because that, that was our, their old pipeline. Um, they still use 3D Studio Max through the whole film. But it's really clever how they, they actually use a, a port of cycles for Max. So not only right. they used cycles for rendering uh, the shots on Blender, but then they ended up rendering in Max with cycles as well, which is a big shift as well because most Autodesk products use Arnold. Um, and it's, it's, really, it's really interesting that they actually did this shift so that my, my guess is that they made it so that everything looked the same, of course, because then the shader work, the shader networking and the materials all look the same so that everything would look the same. But, but the, the, I think the most important thing about this, like you said, is that Blender uh, is not commonly used, but it's really proving its point here because you have side by side during the film shots from DD and from MPC, which I'm assuming are not in Blender because their pipelines are not Blender based. And the shots are next to the Blender shots and you cannot yeah. tell the difference. They look exactly the same. Just proving another, uh, proving once again that Blender is a very powerful CG package and can really be used if you have a correct pipeline with it and and the talent to go with it as well. Because uh, to be honest, you know, I don't want to sound controversial, but I think the the, the thing that I've that has stopped Blender being bigger is really the the the, the talent pool. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not talking about there's thousands of very talented artists of Blender. The problem here is the seasoned artists on facilities that know Blender. That's the problem, you know, because obviously right. when they do these films, they, of course, look for CG artists and everyone has been using Maya forever. 
and they've also been using Udini for a long time. So when you're looking for very seasonal, experienced artists with Blender, it's going to be a tough pick because you're not going to find a lot of people that are used to a pipeline. What you're going to find is a lot of solo artists that do beautiful things on, on, on the internet, but not necessarily maybe they won't fit in on a pipeline. So it's, I think what's been stopping Blender taking over more has been really the, 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 the talent pool which I think is going to change very quickly, especially with films like this and especially with studios like Ubisoft using it a lot. Like I, I think that it's really going to be used more and more in the future and it's going to become just another software that everyone uses. I, I feel, I feel it, it really has that kind of power, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe to talk about that just a little bit further, there was an amazing studio in Toronto um, using... Blender in a major way, mostly for animated shows and features. This was Tangent Animation, which sadly right. is um, right. no longer. I forgot. And That's they right. worked on um, uh, Jorge's uh, Amazing Maya and the Three. Yeah. And That's had right. really implemented um, a lot of that with Blender. Um, I was very sad to see them go because I was actually looking forward to covering that work, you know, and the Blender side of it. But all I wanted to say by bringing that up is I definitely appreciate what has been going on at the Blender Foundation oh, and yeah. um, with artists contributing to Blender and um, basically making Cycles a brilliant renderer. Yeah. Um, you know, and there's also real-time yeah. stuff going on with EV and just so much tinkering and with the, the impact, software. The impact that it's giving to mm. the industry because they've made something for free for everyone and really basically democratized completely visual effects anyone yeah. can now do cg with no problem no one has to pay for a cg package it includes everything in build in it even has a compositing branch as well inside blender it's very impressive what they're doing there and i i think shout out to their team because i i think it's yeah i i, I love i wish there were more softwares like this and i wish there were more free and open source things going on uh, in the industry. There's a few, of course, but you know, it's it could always be better. I, I, I'm a big advocate for this, and especially because it opens up to other countries that might not be able to kind of pay for the large prices of licenses as well, because you see Blender being used everywhere all over the world, and not just on the typical, you know, European studios and American studios. It's 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 really interesting what they're doing, and I think, I think in the end, when the but dust settles, I think we're gonna be surprised how much Blender is gonna impact this industry in a couple of years. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Agree. Yeah. Agree. So Hugo, there's a few more batshit <laughs> crazy moments in this house home raid <laughs> intermission fight. I I kind of love them. They both involve creature work. One is this tiger fight by Al Zahara Studio. Um, you get to see the tiger again, or our tiger again. I love it. I think to the face. I think you go, <laughs> I, I can't not talk about these sequences more from a like audience <laughs> reaction point of view, not necessarily just about the visual effects. You know, there's huge sequences in all these big films we watch. But there's something about the way these are staged. There's something about the lighting design, incorporation of fire and water yeah. that just leaves something more in a good way, right? Leaves leaves a bigger impression on me. What, how did you feel about this? They're memorable. That's the thing. They're memorable. Mm. I was just yesterday talking with someone on Twitter. I was posting a, a behind the scenes of this film and someone was mentioning... Oh, Hugo, was that after you watched this film for the fifth time? <laughs> Is that what that was? <laughs> I know, I know. I have watched this film five times, yes. Here, if it was on the cinema, I would have probably bought five tickets. <laughs> yeah. Wow. No, I, I, I know. I, I don't sound, I don't want to sound like I'm obsessed about the film, but I am totally obsessed about the film. <laughs> <It's> okay. <laughs> this is the most Ian thing I can say. <laughs> no, but, but the, the thing with this is that, that, I was talking with him, uh, with someone on Twitter, I can't remember his name, but I was talking with someone on Twitter and they were saying they watched it like a week ago and they cannot forget some scenes. And I think that's mm. the main thing with this film. Mm. You're not going to forget the moment where Ram picks up 
a torch of fire on the middle of yeah. the street and punches a tiger in midair. Yeah. It's like, how, wh what have I just saw? I, I, this is insane. I, I, I <laughs> but while, while some films might use it as a trailer shot, and I'm sure this is a trailer <laughs> shot for our, uh, it's absolutely part of the character. It's part of the crazy sequence. Yeah. It's, it's not even unexpected at this point in the film, <laughs> no. but I still love it. Yeah. It's amazing. So. And, and have you, I'm sure the audience has noticed that we haven't even, we're not going to, because we can't talk about everything. There's even bigger shots on this entire sequence. There, let's not forget, there's oh, an yeah. entire truck cage opening up with, like, what, 20, 20 animals dropping out of it? Like, I, I, yeah. There's not a breakdown about Which, it, but I just... <laughs> it's a beautiful shot, that, though, isn't it? Because they leap out in very sort of <laughs> interesting angles. Like, it's literally a really nicely designed... Yeah shot of the animals leaping yeah that, that, that shot thing. money shot and then the second money shot is when bm is flying like you see the the head of the tiger and then in the middle of him on a tele lens you show his face coming in between the tiger and the other tiger and he has like these torches oh my god what the hell is happening so no, but i i got so deviated good. there sorry i guess besides ram hitting a tiger in the face Ian, let's talk about the stuff beyond the leopard shot. Come on. Come on, man. What? <laughs> if you look at the breakdown. Come on. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you hit a tiger with a flaming torch. I think the other thing this sequence really needed was a leopard throw. <laughs> Do you agree with that, Hugo? Yes. I think that's what this sequence needed. Yeah, yeah of course. That's the well, next step. Yes. <laughs> that's exactly what happens. Care of visual effects by Redefine. <laughs> um, what else can you say about this sequence, Hugo? He throws a leopard. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, Ian, he doesn't throw a leopard, does he? What does he throw? <laughs> well, my favorite thing in the world, Stuffies. Let, let's, let's just have a minute of silence for that stuffy. <laughs> or a minute of celebration, <laughs> we could say. <laughs> It is by far Sorry. the most amazing thing I've ever seen because usually you normally have a stuffy the size of the object that you're throwing, but they're throwing mm. a soccer ball. <laughs> they're throwing a small right. soccer ball is it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just like, I'm just trying to be like really PC and like like they built something great, you know. No, it's you use what you can. You got to use what you can. You go. It works. Whatever works, and it does work. It does work. That's the most exciting yeah. thing about it. And and then, of course, not only the leopard gets thrown, but then it hits the soldier and then it rotates in the middle of the air and yeah. it continues going. Yeah, this this is this is a crazy sequence. Well, and and look, I've I've only watched the film once. I this happens in slow motion as well, right? Yeah, as yeah. do many parts of the sequence. Now, let's talk about that. Animating a creature that needs to <laughs> not do something normal i.e it's tumbling grappling on someone's head like and in slow motion it's very successful that shot yeah. not always easy to do to communicate the jostling limbs and all that sort of thing so i, I thought they yeah. did a great job of that one they did they did and and this this goes throughout the whole the whole entire film most shots with creatures end up having slow motion shots and mm. the creature work is exceptional because it is in slow motion sometimes I'm assuming almost at 300 frames per second because it's so slow sometimes. I, I mean, now the entire like the the entire uh, 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 hetos of like using creatures in this film is really cool, and even like not just the creatures that are alive and flying around, but there is even like even on the beginning on the hunting scene they use creatures as well in CG for the hunting uh, party. Also, so well, I mean, what just briefly mentioned, so well integrated into the environment. And again, a very ethical production where they have no animals on set. There's not a single animal on set on this film. They even have a disclaimer on the beginning of the film saying that there was no animals mm. on set and everything was CG, including the dead animals, including the, the, the game that they catch, which is remarkable, uh, yeah. which is being held by wood sticks and going through the forest. And you see the, the forest leaves light going through it. And, and, and when I first saw it, I would never assume that would have been CG. It's so well made. No. 
so well made. In my dreams, though, Hugo, there there were real snakes. There, were, there was a real snake that <laughs> bit that guy's, or that who you know he caught it with his hand. That was real, right? In my dream, <laughs> yes, so, it was. Yeah, great work there too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got to get away from the intermission fight. That was massive and yeah. um, awesome, awesome work. There's another sequence <laughs> that's kind of full of brilliant choreography um, and it involves now both of them teaming up. Um, there's only a brief one here for us to talk about, which is the escape from the prison, Yeah. right? When um, on the shoulders, there's a lot of chaos going on. This is uh, what we're going to show is Digital Domain doing some neat environment work, wire replacements, uh, general crazy flipping of <laughs> tower guards. Uh, just again, Hugo, really great kind of invisible effects work for what is also quite a big effect yeah. sequence. And must be the first time ever that I've seen a grown man on top of another grown man hitting people. <laughs> I don't yeah. think I've ever How seen cool anything like that. that. I, I, this is what we were talking about on the last episode. This is almost like a Buster, Buster Keaton movie. You know, at this point, it's like a comedy yeah. thing. It's almost like a Jackie Chan moment, where he's, of course, his legs are broken, so of course he can't walk. But mm. it is so well made that he's they're choreographed and synchronized completely. And the way that this was filmed was even more crazy. So there's a there's at least two things that I've noticed on the breakdown, which is amazing. The first one being that there's like this carry, like this blue screen little trolley that is behind them with like yeah. a stick holding Ram in place. And then there's like two dudes with spandex blues like running with this trolley. It is so cool completely flawlessly integrated by DD. DD did an amazing job removing these dudes from the set and the trolley. Of course, there's, of course, wires from above, wires from the side. There's even shots where they were actually shot somewhere else and integrated into the plate, which is also remarkable. And, of course, a, a concophony of wires everywhere that they had to clean up. This is very, very good staging and action sequence, really good rhythm. And you're just like on your the edge of your seat watching this. Uh, I I I love this sequence. This is so cool. This is like yeah. like really really well made. Yeah, the, the digital domain did an amazing job here. I I yeah with everything, Inclu not only like that cleanup, but also like you said, there's an entire 360 environment because they go all over and they rotate all over. Then they're like moving the camera like crazy everywhere, and the second floor of the the, the prison is completely done in CG. The entire second floor and also the towers done in CG, so it's 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 remarkable work from them. Yeah, very very awesome work from DD. However, Hugo, <laughs> we're now getting to my favorite sequence in the oh film. Oh my god! Now, everybody, if I've already said my favorite sequence was something else, it's only because <laughs> they're all pretty damn good. But the climax in the forest, my where gosh. so much crazy stuff happens as well. But none of it is, like, it's all a big surprise here. I keep saying, oh, look, it's crazy, it's stylized, it's, you, you don't have a problem with it because it's a bit over the top. You never quite know what's going to happen in this sequence, partly because the two characters now are using, like, old-school weaponry yeah. arrows or they're using motorbikes as weapons. We'll get to that. <laughs> Uh, you think maybe the, the British soldiers have got a handle on this, but, you know, proved wrong again. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I just sort of thought that they upped the ante here and they, again, as I keep saying, nailed it because yeah. it's different. Yeah. Well, what's your reaction to this? This, this, is an in, this is an amazing piece of directing and staging and, and, and art direction from everyone involved. Like I, I feel this entire sequence is when they've really come to stride with their powers, of course. That's when they are... Mm. Now they are not superhuman. They're super, super, superhuman now. They can yeah. do anything. And, and the, the groundness of how this is shot is unbelievable because I don't want to disrespect anyone. But normally, this would have been just a CG fest, would have been just like a completely digital fest. And notice how 
there isn't that many digital double take takeovers on this film. Uh, there are a few, especially you know on the tiger chase on the forest in the beginning. Mm. There's a few, but on this sequence, you look at the behind the scenes and the breakdown, and I'm I'm shocked on how much they actually shot of this. Of course, with a lot of wires and a lot of removal and a lot of extensions and a lot of cleanup and a lot of compositing, that was amazing. But it really brings a groundness to the shot because you see their superhuman feet, but they are actually doing it and it looks like they're doing it the way that they're floating or flying or jumping or holding the bow. It, it, they, are, they are actually doing it there, although with the help of a lot of wires and stunt doubles. But I... I feel it just brings this shot to a level of groundness that sometimes I'm afraid on certain blockbuster movies you lose when you just turn into an animated CG movie. And I, I love that they didn't do this here. I love that they kept it, yeah. kept it very structured and grounded. And of course, it sometimes looks a bit wonky. It does because it's just a bunch of people on wires. But I, I, I like it. I, I really do like it. And I think it's a great stylistic sto choice to leave it like this, you know, and not to full yes, it, yes, it almost feels like this is an obvious example of 20 years ago, we would have just filmed this sequence as much as possible with stunt stunties, hidden wire work, and practical, you know, fires and... Um, uh, explosions. Plus you go, we would have filmed it with a lot of edits. Yeah. So here's the thing that happens in this sequence. There's plenty of edits. It's quite frenetic as we keep saying as well, but the visual effects nature of it means you can hold yeah. on a character. Yeah. Like a really obvious one is when he uses his foot <laughs> to spin the motorbike up so he can spin it around. You, you know, I, I just feel like an old way of doing that, if there was an old way of doing that, is just with clever editing. Yeah. Um, here, in a, this is kind of an obvious statement, but VFX lets you hold on the shots yeah. and, again, witness the superpowers of these revolutionaries happening. Yeah. Um, you know, that that that's definitely in other films. That's the whole point of yeah. what, why I, removal I, and visual effects we, let we you talk do. About this awesome, often. Yeah. yeah, we talk about this often now later on this, the show. I love that now visual effects are arriving to this moment where we can shoot and still have everything combined and not just go to full CG or to full reel. Mm. We just have this really great combination, which happens a lot on this film. And I, I, I love it. I... I the fact that he, yes, he's hitting people with the bike. <laughs> Let's not forget he's using a bike uh, <laughs> like a baseball bat, literally. But he is holding a bike. There is like a rigged blue screen bike that he's actually holding on set with the help of wires, of course. And obviously they didn't really use that for the tracking or the CG. They've only used it as a reference. But then that basically built the groundness of the shot for the CG artist to put the CG bike on top. And of course that CG bike never defied the laws of of other than that shot what i'm mm. more what i'm more referring to is the fact that by shooting it this way with basically a set with blue screen because that's what this is they basically have almost like a 360 set with half trunk trees uh, and then a huge blue screen around and a lot of lighting and the fact that they are there with a the camera with the lens with the handheld and they shoot it for real, and then they just augment it with CG, allows you to just give it the build availability that you don't usually happen. I'll give you a really good example of this. That shot that Ram holds the bow in front of the lens, and then he hits the bow, and that is a typical vertigo trombone effect, lens effect, where they're moving yep. the camera forward and zooming out, or the other way around, and so you get the bow gets thinner, and everything kind of stretches almost like the Alfred Hitchcock vertigo shot. And that shot kind of, I, I thought, it, when I first saw it, I thought, oh, that must be a CG shot. But no, it's not, like it's real. Like I, I saw it on Breakdown, they shot it for real. It is actually a yeah. real trombone shot that they shot it for real on camera. And then they had to do the environment. I, I kid you not, this is difficult. This is difficult to actually do a complete track in 3D with a lens that is zooming out at the same time of deforming the entire shot. It's really difficult because you have to assess for distortion on the lens and then chromatic aberration and there's like 
all sorts of 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 problems that the lens are bringing in with like like displacement of the image this is really difficult to pull off and and they do this on this shot and then they end up doing it on i don't know 20 other shots it's it's a very impressive shot and it's filled with hero moments and trailer moments of course you know yeah yeah very nice work by makuta again here um i i actually we've talked a lot about the practical side of this uh, the shoot the forest environments which they're secondary in some way yeah. to some of the you know the motorbikes and arrows and um the sidecar exploding work. <laughs> <laughs> but uh i just thought they were very convincing and um you know uh, are a lot more extensive than you might realize yeah. when you first watch this film so hopefully by watching the breakdown at the moment you've seen that extensive digital extension work that they did and yeah. we just wanted to applaud it and and not only applaud it but also there's another side of this as well the fire which the fire itself yeah. lighting interaction and fire which there's no fire on set at all i thought they did an amazing job on on making look like making it look like they were actually there with the fire and actually lit by the fire in some occasions they have practical lights on set to fit in that thing like when he's holding the bow and and doing the grenade explosions and everything but there's a lot of other moments that you see on the breakdowns that they don't have any fire at all there and they had to like paint in the fire and paint in the reflections and paint in the the, the light now this is this is an incredible uh, sequence i just watched it last night again and i there's so many amazing moments on this shot like my some of my favorite shots on the film, including that amazing shot that they're running through the fog and you mm. see the shadows of them through the fog and then they show through the fog synchronized running and then they kind of jump and hit two soldiers into the floor and kill them. That is a hell of a shot. And, I, and, and the entire thing, like CG fog, CG dust, CG environment, because the... They're actually running on a blue screen with a couple of tree cr trunks. There's no smoke there. They had to put the smoke and uh, the, the, um, the, the debris all in CG. It, it's, it's really good. It's really, really good work. Yes, such great work. Um, so glad that there's an extensive breakdown that you guys can watch for it. Hugo, they're the main sequences we wanted to mention in part two. But you've got a couple of other sequences you wanted to give a <laughs> shout out to, right? Yeah, I know. I know we're getting. I know this is a long episode, and I know there's so much on this film. But I just wanted to shout out a couple of other things which I found fascinating. You know, not not only talking about the fact that there's like CG trains on the film when they're doing the bromance, mm. and there's like full set like full set extensions with the flower fields and the background mountains when Ram returns home. And when he meets his family again, those all those are all very impressive shots. And on a normal film, we would be talking about them, but <laughs> there's so much other really? things on here. But I really wanted to shout out Scott's sequence when Scott, you know, the the evil guy on this film, the the commander of the British army. Uh, this uh, was, uh, uh, I believe, done by Kraft VFX. And not only is death at the end of the film, which is an incredible set extension uh, design apocalyptic explosion shot where he's there with blue screen. But I, I really want to shout out the moment where the car gets hit and explodes and he's flying through the air and the, like, like <laughs> the car goes up and Scott goes up as well and then grabs the shotgun and kind of shoots him, grabs the, the rifle and shoots him. The entire thing was actually shot practically. <laughs> it's yeah. insane. They, they replaced the whole car, of course, but it's practical. There's like wires there and they brought Scott, I can't remember his name, name of the actor, but brought the actor up, brought the whole car rig up, and then the rifle is in the middle of the air as well. Like It's just, like, it's just insane. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that shot, but it's almost Hugo. It's got to be the only bit in the film where I'm like, how are they going to get away with this <laughs> weird staging of like the chase and he's finally <laughs> revealing who he is by setting off that thing? You know, I it was the only point in the film where I thought they needed some, something dramatic to happen to keep the action going. Yeah. And I, the visual effects work awesome. Yeah. But it, 
it actually was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. It's too they, much. They're it's doing that. Too far. They're doing that. <laughs> it's going yeah. too far. I know. It's but, almost like the guy was also superhuman uh, as well, doing this kind of stuff. I know. I know. <laughs> But I, I wanted yeah. to shout out because we already during the episode we were a shout out to another things, uh, you know, like the the hunting in the beginning, the hunting shot. I, there are so many other shots on this film, and like like we mentioned, there's twelve facilities. There's not even I'm guessing not even a third of the breakdowns out already. There's so much more to come, I'm sure, and there's so many more visual effects and invisible visual effects and. There, there's also the dance sequences as well, you know, like the, the, oh, yeah. like the, the Desina uh, sequence, you know, which is amazing. It's one of my favorite sequences on the film when he's like saying, not salsa, not flamingo, my brother, it's uh, Desina. <laughs> it's like, it's so cool and stylized and it's so funny as well. Um, and that entire sequence also is filled with CG because the environments where they're, they're dancing or the same environments that we see on the fight of the intermission, which means they had to set extend the background walls and the background um, uh, structures. And I'm guessing there's also clever, clever visual effects happening on the dance. Not that I know yet. There's no nothing written about it, but it, there must be some because they are so fast on the dance and they're completely in sync on the mouth. And I, I just find it fascinating. That entire thing. The nacho dance, the nacho, nacho, nacho dance is just amazing. Yeah. It's really a clever well, some, sequence. <laughs> someone's doing some awesome retimes <laughs> or synchronization yeah. type work. But yeah, that is neat. I don't think we can cover anything else, Hugo. We're, no. we're enamored by this film, but uh, we're sorry if we've missed anything huge out. We, we really love it. We're like absolute um converts <laughs> to this kind of film the film industry in india which we know is diverse in itself and and yeah. has a lot of different yeah. um uh you know kinds of films and people making them involved so uh congratulations to everyone uh yeah. thank you for making such an amazing project that we can talk about on vfx notes and i wanted to apologize everyone that we're not going to finish the podcast with the two of us dancing i am so sorry about that that's how we should have ended the podcast <laughs> It's just like the film. What about singing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dancing and singing. <laughs> How cool is that? That there's like an entire 15 minute long dance sequence at the end of the film, which is uh, amazing. Yeah. And even the director dances on it as well. I just find it fascinating. Like, no, no, I, I, you're right. Like, it's so cool that we are get to talk about this amazing project. I, I really personally hope this project is get seen by as many people as possible. My, I'm going to start my my campaign for this to be nominated for the Oscars on visual effects. I feel this is what should happen. Let's all get behind this. Let's nominate this film. Let's try to get it at least to the to the to the Bake Off. Like I think this film deserves it. It's look, it's a perfect combination of set, staging, film design, visual effects, part, practical wire work. It has everything and the kitchen sink. It has everything in one single film you know so it deserves a nomination let's go for it <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first everybody <laughs> let's make Get. this happen <laughs> start your lobbying <laughs> all right thank you everyone for tuning in thanks hugo really enjoyed this one uh and don't forget to listen to part one everybody uh and then come to part two thanks right. again thank you Bye, everyone. Bye.